Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Last week we released a video on the Smith & Wesson M2.0 subcompact, the MMP subcompact chambered in 9mm. And we did get a lot of comments on the video comparing it to a shield, asking why would I choose this over the shield? Isn't the shield just as good? You know, various questions along those lines. So we have a shield. We've got, actually each one of us has one of these things and we keep them in our get home bags. So I dug one out and we're going to do a comparison to show you what is the difference between the two guns and why would you pick one or the other. So let's start by taking each one of these and making sure that they're not going to be a problem. So we do have some unloaded Smith & Wessons. One of the things that you might right away, let's talk about it before I clean up a little bit, is talk about capacity. So the shield, which is this one right here, uses these magazines. They're specific to the shield. This is a 9mm one. These magazines are very specific to that 9mm. You have a 7 round capacity and you have an 8 round capacity with a little bit of a sleeve. And the one with the sleeve does actually blend nicely with the grip, smoothly flows in, and you get roughly a three finger grip depending on the size of your hand so two and three quarters to three and a quarter finger grip depending on your hand and the flush mount magazine mounts nice and flush and gives you about two and a half to two fingers again depending on the size of your hand and, and how well you grip it the M2.0 the M&P M2.0 SC which is this one right here starts with the base capacity of 12. Now, I know it says 11 there, but if I turn it over, it says 12. That magazine fits equally flush, and it's really about a two-ish finger grip. Surprisingly, the grips are the same height with the flush magazines. So I'm going to put the flush magazine back in this one. Both guns are four and a half inches tall. I'll even put them side by side. Both guns are four and a half inches tall. But the interesting thing about the shield, when I grip the shield, I get about two and a half fingers on it, and I'll make sure I got it all the way up there. When I do the SC, and I'll, again, I'll make sure it's all the way up there, it's not quite two fingers, two and a half, because I'm kind of cramped up here. If I grip it comfortably and put my finger where it's comfortable, it's really two fingers. So the grip is a little bit different besides having the same height, and it's really to the design of the trigger guard and the amount of undercut. They look similar, but they feel a little bit different. From a capacity standpoint, this flush mag, as I mentioned, is 12. You also can use this 12 round pinky extender magazine, and it comes with two mags. And with the pinky extender, it's pretty, pretty much a three finger grip. It comes with this mag and the flush one in the box. It also comes with these sleeves. You can see it right here, this little sleeve and this sleeve will slide over the larger magazines. So this is the 15 round magazine from a compact. And now I've really truly got a solid three finger grip. Make sure I'm all the way up there. So I've got 15 rounds, but I also have available 17 rounds and this sleeve came with it as well. And this is the 17 round magazine from the full size and more than three finger grip. So one of the key things, the difference between the shield and the SC is going to be capacity. You're limited to a max of eight rounds with the factory magazines as they sit today in the shield. It only comes with the seven and the eight. I'm sure over time you'll have companies that'll make aftermarket larger, larger magazines and maybe Smith & Wesson even will. But at the moment, that's your limit. When you get into this, 17 is currently the limit. That's the biggest factory mag, and just like anything else, the aftermarket may take off. So you might wonder, okay, well, that's obvious. Then, then I'm done here. Why would I even bother? Well, there is a trade-off, and that is thickness. If I put the two guns so that you can see them side by side, there's a 0.3 inch thickness difference. So the shield is 0.99 inches thick, and the SC is 1.2 inches thick. So you do pay the penalty a little bit in thickness. So that 0.3 inches, it's not a major deal, but it can be. If you're trying to carry this and you're looking for something thin based on how you want to carry it, especially if you're wanting to do appendix or you're wanting to put it on the ankle, that 0.3 inches can make a difference. 
it's actually 30, roughly 30%. So it's a noticeable number when you're trying to hide the thing or when you're trying to stuff it somewhere. It does also have a bit of a length difference. It's about a half inch. So it's 6.1 inches long for the shield and it's 6.6 .6 inches long for the SC. So it's a little bit longer and it's a little bit thicker. It's not huge. It's not like if you don't have either one and you buy this one that you're going to be totally unable to carry it or anything along those lines. There's no reason you can't carry this easily. But if you're needing that really thin, small, then the shield's going to kick into that place. If capacity is more of a concern, of course, the M2.0, the SC, is going to be more what you're going to be looking for. Weight's another difference. So unloaded, just as they sit here with the empty magazine, 18.3 ounces for the shield and 25 ounces for the SC. So you're looking at about a 6.7 ounce difference. That can add up. The weight can make a difference, especially, again, going back to something like an ankle carry, where you now have reciprocating mass. As your legs kick back and forth, the, the mass of the gun is on one of the legs, and it's kicking back and forth with it. I've seen people carry a Glock 29, which is even bigger than this on an ankle. I don't think I'd enjoy doing it. That much reciprocating mass on one leg is going to get annoying. So you've got a weight, a capacity, and a size difference. The benefit or the advantage goes to the S to the shield for weight and size, and the advantage definitely goes to the SC for capacity and a little bit of flexibility. You'll notice there's a Picatinny rail on the SC and there's not on the shield. There are laser guard accessories you can get that'll mount around the laser guard, but your field of choice is more narrow to finding things that do fit that, whereas with the Picatinny rail, the sky's the limit on the things that you can get to put on this thing. Now both of these happen to be 9 millimeters. There is some caliber diversity available. The SC is available in 40 and 45 as well. <coughs> the shield is also available in 40 and 45, but it also adds 380. And just to make sure I'm clear too, the 380 option with the shield is not in the form you see here. It's the EZ variant, which is a little bit bigger, so it starts to give up some of the form factor advantage. But you do have a little bit lighter ammo. The ammo itself is a little bit lighter and it's a little bit more manageable recoil and that can make a difference in these small guns if you have less grip strength, less hand strength that can make a gun in this size territory manageable for you versus the 9mm. As a rule I try to stay with 9mm where possible but 3D really does have a place in the world. From a ergonomic standpoint this one is a little bit flatter and squarer feeling and that's simply because it's thinner. This one tends to be a little bit more rounded and kind of just a little bit smoother to fit in the hand and you do have the various grip swells that you can replace on this which you don't get on the shield which is common with a lot of these single stacks. You don't get a lot of the adjustable backstrap features that you get on them. The safeties are very similar. It has the hinge trigger as part of the inertial drop safety on both guns. They have a loaded chamber peephole on both guns, and they have the internal drop safeties on both guns, so they're both designed to be a drop safe weapon. They both have very nice three dot sights, which are actually really easy to see. Now the shield itself comes in a few different marketing packages where you can get it with a crimson trace laser, you can get something called the defense kit that includes a holster and some other things. There's a few more marketing flavors of the shield than there is the subcompact. We give them time, they'll catch up. And both of them, you can see a little square. You can see it more clearly on the SC. Both of these have the option of a version with a thumb safety. I tend to not prefer thumb safeties on striker guns. Usually the automatic safeties that are built in are more than adequate. But the thumb safety option is available if you, if you can find one. MSRP is another factor, but maybe a minor factor. The Shield has an MSRP of $479, and the SC is almost $100 more at $569. Now, as of the making of this video right now, you're paying MSRP, or in some cases higher, than a lot of guns. But when we got these things, we, we got the Shields for about $350. But right now, when I see them, and I actually see them available, they're going closer to MSRP. So you're looking at just under a $500 gun and you know $550 to just under $600 for the SC. 
the last thing that may be a factor that comes into play is the triggers and shooting them. So let me take the magazines out to make this part a little bit easier to do. We'll start with the shield. You can hear the take up, but it's really just the mechanism moving. And it's got about a five to a five and a half pound, pretty crisp, nice break over travel stop. Kind of a decent reset. It's not the shortest reset. That would be all the way out. So it's a decent reset for this type of gun. And you're right on the wall when it does reset, pull the trigger and it breaks again. So it's a nice trigger, which the M2.0s drastically improved the trigger over the previous generations. This trigger is scratchy and noisy on take up. And I showed that in the review video. I think it's the way the springs are set up. If I'm sitting here in a quiet room operating the trigger, not only do I hear the, the clinking of the mechanism, but I also feel that spring and I can, I can hear that scratchiness. Is it a big deal? No. Would I prefer it to be smoother and quieter? Yes. Right around the five, five and a half pound break. It's a slightly different feel. It breaks a little further back, but it is nice and crisp and it also has the over travel stop. It does have a nicer reset, though it bounces off the reset a little bit, so there's a bit of take up to get back on the wall and then it breaks again, but I'm going to show you that again. There's the reset, and you can see a little bit of take up, but that would be all the way out. So it has a slightly shorter reset than the shield, but overall, from a trigger perspective, it's really not going to make a whole lot of difference in practice between the two of them, you know, unless you're trying to go for competition, and then generally, if you're talking competition, you're not talking about either one of these guns. You're looking more the full size, yeah, compact at least, up to the full size. From a firing these perspective, both of them are relatively easy to shoot well. Uh, of course, the shield is a bit snappier, not because it's a poorer gun, just it's smaller and it's lighter. And when you, change, you don't change the power of the round, they're both 9mm, the shield has a 3.1 inch barrel, the SC has a 3.6 inch barrel. It's not going to make a significant velocity difference, so they're roughly going to be about the same amount of recoil energy. You're going to feel it more in the shield. The SC is just a little bit less snappy and a little bit more wanting to stay level, but a little bit of time spent with the shield and practice, you could definitely catch up with it. If I were looking to get one gun, and one gun only, it would definitely be the SC. That fact that I can have that flush mag for concealed carry, and then pop it up to the 17 round mag for nightstand, Pretty much I can buy one gun and I've got my home defense, I've got my reload, and I've got my concealed carry all covered in one. But I probably would buy both. What I would find is that under daily conditions, this is the one I would carry. But in those cases where I've got dress clothes or I'm going to ankle carry or some other alternative carry and size matters more than capacity, this one would work, which is basically what I do with my Glocks. I carry a Glock 26 daily. I carry a Glock 42, which happens to be a 380, when I'm needing to have something small, like dress clothes or things like that. And then I carry a Glock 29 if I'm going to be in the woods or someplace that even that's not in the woods that kind of acts like it's in the woods. So overall, they both kind of have a place in life, but I would say the SC is overall more versatile. It gives the magazine capacity and it gives you a little bit more flexibility along with the Picatinny rail. Hopefully you enjoyed that and found it maybe even interesting. If you like our videos, please give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, kind of everywhere. And thank you.